you uh, used to manage Nipsey Hussle. Right. Nipsey had a real interesting perspective. He he did an interview. I'm not sure where where it was exactly, but he said he talked about an incident that he was somehow involved in. It was like some some shootout had happened at like a, a gas station, I, I guess. Yes. And he came home, and like his mother, grandmother said, "Oh, were you involved in that?" He said, "Oh no, no, I wasn't." And but they had video footage of the whole thing. And he said he saw over the next few weeks all the homies start getting arrested and everything else like that. And he realized that at that point, the way he had been doing things is no longer going to work no. because of the cameras and because of the the, the level of surveillance. And and he, and he said he said something interesting. He said that the 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 older homies who who never had these cameras and this level of you know, yeah. evidence that could be used yeah. against you. We're, we're guiding the younger, the, you know, the, the younger uh, generation in a direction that was unintentionally going, you know, in the wrong place because they just didn't know. So, so you're, you're taking advice from the older generation, but now you have all this new technology that's working against you. And he realized that at that point he needs to sort of switch up his mentality. Right. Do you agree with that? I, um, I don't know where he said, I don't know where he was going with it, but... I can agree that different different areas and different people have. So it's like, it's a bunch of dudes that's OGs. Like, it's crazy. But because of the way it's, way it's structured, it's no really, it's not me. Because of the way it is, it's no real structure. But yeah, it, it's, it, you would, to even go through the stuff that we went through when we was younger, before the cell phones and these cameras on these blocks, and get away with it. Right. You could get away with damn near anything back in the yeah, day. It's and, ridiculous. I mean, if you think about, you even take it back 100 years yeah. where you could shoot someone and move to the next town over. Change your name. Change your name. <laughs> yeah. Shave your beard. And, you, and it was over. Yeah, you would never get caught. Now. And then fingerprints, then DNA, then, then video cameras everywhere, and cell phones. But that, hasn't, that don't stop people. I mean, you don't think you, it slows people down a little bit? When you mad, you mad. Yeah. If you if you if you upset and you 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 on your thing and you you mad because but you going. Yeah. Now it may stop that dude who's not really serious about it, but it's not gonna stop somebody who if they going, they going. And they really ain't caring in that moment about you no know, cameras and I've seen it happen. There was some sort of situation that happened, some sort of shootout with you Nipsey, L A P D something. No, nah, that was um, that was what, what was that? S- about seven years ago, eight years ago. Yeah, it wasn't no shoot. It wasn't no shooting. It was um, where the police was shooting. Yeah, right. and um, it was a family dispute. You know what I mean? And that's what happened. Families had disputes. You know what I mean? And that's my little brother. You know what I'm saying? I love him to death. We just did the whole little tour, but I mean, it was like any and everybody else. Sometimes you have a dispute and you got to get understanding. We come from a, a, a place where that, that happens. You know what I mean? And like I said, if he got a problem, I got a problem. And if I got a problem, he definitely going to have a problem. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just like, shoot, you might hear about me and my sons having problems. Or me and my kids, me and my wife. It's the same thing. How many kids do you have? Five. You have five kids. And I remember you mentioned that you're waiting for one of your sons to go to college. No, he's in college. He's in college already. He's in college. Okay, yeah, it, was, yeah. it was an older interview. He's then. at Reno, Nevada. I feel like you don't want your kids to follow in your footsteps. No, definitely. That my motivation, my motivation for purposely trying to get this game violence to the point to where it's none is my kids, my sons. I have sons who are at the age who are at the that target age, and when I came home, I definitely wanted to be a part of the solution and getting LA to where it is right now today. You know what I mean? And um, my motivation was a selfish motivation because I have sons. And I'll never want to see my sons laying in no casket. Was there a level, you know, you could tell your kids whatever you want to tell them, but they reach a certain age and they're going to have their own, and, you know? And, and with me, most people know my kids, know my sons. They aggressive, they, they in the streets. But it was the sons that I was gone for. Like I was gone 13 years. So my two boys was 13 years without a father. Yeah. 
And then my last two kids are 13 years with a father. So they're a lot different than the other two. So when I was going with 13 years, in my last three years and nine months, I did in the shoot. So I was three years and nine months straight in the hole. And that was like no communication with my sons. So they grew up hearing the stories of Big U. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like the 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 legend of Big U and the, you know, getting shot, taking the guns and shot multiple times. And they grew up with that. And I didn't want them, I didn't know the effect of it, but I didn't want them to come visit me while I was in the hole. Because it was only like, you had to drive three hours, you only get a 15 minute visit, and then you gotta drive three hours back. So I didn't want my wife to bring my sons to go through that, and then you only in the glass. So how are they gonna take turns? So I didn't want to put them through that. So I came home in 2004, but I only had been on the main line 21 days before I was released. And that was my, that was the time they got to meet me. And so it was a transition me coming home and not coming home, the person they had been hearing about. You know what I mean? They had heard about this, this street dude and I guess all the newspaper articles and whatever had you, big you, this and he did this and he did that. And when I come home, I'm, 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 I'm not actually the person they had been hearing about. I'm a lot different. I'm, I'm the opposite where well, you could probably just see Twerks of he could be this guy, but you know what I mean? Yeah. So it was a, it was a difference to them. 